The next day, when Grandmother climbed into the truck next to Tony, she explained what had happened. My daughter's husband broke his foot. He can't be driving tourists for a while. No paychecks for at least a month. He's worrying about his truck payments. When they got out of the truck at Merrill's diner, Grandmother followed Tony into the trading post. Her velvet skirt swished as she marched over to the pawn counter and removed her silver and turquoise bracelet, the one she had worn since she was a young woman. Tony stared as she gave it to Mr. Hilson and received some cash in return. Grandmother didn't say a word as she walked past Tony and out the door towards Merrill's. On the drive home that day, Grandmother was quiet. One hand covered her wrist where she once always worn her bracelet. They dropped her off at her Hogan. As his mother backed the truck away, Tony blurted, My grandmother pawned her bracelet. His mother turned to look at him. That's her business, she said sternly. Tony was worried. He knew how much that bracelet meant to his grandmother. She almost never took it off. The next week when they stopped to pick up grandmother for the drive to Gallup, Tony's aunt came out to the truck followed by Tony's two young cousins. Grandmother is not well, she said. She hasn't come out of her Hogan for a couple of days. It may be time to call the medicine man. I'll talk to my husband about it, Tony's mother said. Tony's crossed his arms and lowered his chin. He knew what grandmother needed. By the way, Tony said Tony's aunt, she gave me some cash to help with expenses while my husband isn't working. Wouldn't, wouldn't say where she got it. That day, the drive to Gallup seemed endless. When they got to Merrill's, Tony ran to the trading post and went straight towards the pawn counter. Mr. Hilson, he said, I have to buy back my grandmother's bracelet. You know the rules, Tony. Pawns can't be sold except to the owner for at least six months, said Mr. Hilson. But it's for her, Tony's voice quavered. She's sick. She needs it back. Well, since you're family, I guess it might be all right, Mr. Hilson hesitated. Should I take the money out of your account? Tony stood up straighter and nodded. Yes, please, today. On the drive home, Tony said, We need to stop at Grandmother's. I have something for her. His mother said nothing, but she turned off the main road and stopped in front of Grandmother's Hogan. Tony got out and quietly entered. Grandmother was lying down, her eyes closed. My grandmother, Tony whispered. He held out her turquoise bracelet. She opened her eyes and nodded slightly. Tony approached and carefully lifted her wrist. Then he slipped the bracelet back on where it belonged. Grandmother closed her eyes again and Tony left the Hogan. That night, Tony's father drove over to see grandmother and talk with his sister about arranging for a healing ceremony. He returned in a happy mood. Grandmother is better, he reported. Tony closed his eyes and smiled. The following week, Grandmother went with Tony and his mother to Gallup. When they arrived at Merrill's, Tony dragged his feet toward the trading post. He had to start all over again, saving for a saddle. He kicked a few bottle caps along the sidewalk and finally went inside. Grandmother was talking with Mr. Hilson. Tony went to look at the saddle. There was an empty space where, on a sawhorse where it used to sit. Someone had bought it. Tony hid from Grandmother as she left the store so she wouldn't see his sad face. Somehow, he made it through the day without anyone asking him what was wrong. When it was time to go home, he went to the truck. His mother said, You got your saddle, my son. He looked at her in confusion and shook his head. He didn't know what to say. She pointed to the back of the truck. Tony hopped up and leaned on his forearms, feet dangling, to see into the truck bed. He couldn't believe it. There it was his beautiful saddle. His mother smiled and climbed into the truck. Tony felt grandmother touch his shoulder. He turned and she nodded slowly, her wrinkled brown face not quite hiding a smile. Mr. Hilson traded your saddle against my next rug, she said. Now let's go home.